Uh, these are the first two bags coming off the line. Uh, as you can see, it's reasonably automated. We haven't got people stacking pallets. It's all uh, all done by a robot. And that's our first pallet off the production line. It was about 4.30 on uh, August the 1st, so good result. Uh, we shipped our first product on September the 7th, so as I said, that went uh, in containers off to, to Fiji. And um, yeah, so it's it's been a it's been a good whirlwind time for me. I've I've come come here to Topo with uh, wife and kids, uh, January 2010. Um, so to stand up here today is is uh, hugely satisfying for myself, but also for the for the board and shareholders as well. Uh, we just sort of throw some key benefits up that I see for Topo. I think it's it's important that you are aware of these type of projects going on, and many of you will be. Um, but it, I just sort of was. It was useful to, to see the, I guess, the benefits uh, for the region. Um, some of the things that I identified, so there's 30 direct staff, but there's another 30 indirect staff, so we contract out our tankers, for example, so we have uh, significant employment in the tanker operators, courier drivers, um, cleaners, etc. At the time of the construction, so from May, June 2010 through to the 1st of August, there's been over 250 <coughs> people on site at any one time. So it's a, it's a significant amount of people moving into town. Now, they don't all stay here, unfortunately, but they, they do all bring money into the region. Um, you know, just in my team alone, we've, you know, there's a lot of people that are buying houses or renting new houses, so it does create opportunities. Catering companies spend a fortune down at Plateau over the last year. <laughs> Sorry, he's my neighbour, I have to say that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it has been good for the region. Um, you know, there has, I haven't taken a quantitative study of what, what money it has brought into the region because purely it's not my, my, not my business and I'm not going to spend money on doing that, but uh, it certainly has been millions. We've, we've, we've spent millions of dollars either directly or indirectly in the region. And, where possible, we have to be commercial, so we've tendered out all of our business right throughout. But where possible, if it's been a competitive tender, we've, we've used local local companies where possible. I'd just like to finish on the note that the dealings we have had with, with council and staff have been very good. So I thank you for that. The, the support's been excellent. Um, in terms of the roading, I, you know, Forest Road, for example, I think there's, there's progress being made there in terms of uh, sealing Forest Road, which is great. Um, the work we did in terms of getting all the consenting process, the builders were, were very happy because some of these projects, and I've been involved in other regions, are not that easy to, to make happen in a quick time frame. So thanks to uh, the councillors and, and council for that, Rob. So that's about it for me. A nice, short, sharp presentation of Meraka. Hopefully that all makes sense. And I guess if there's any questions, Michael. Thank you, Richard. Um, no doubt it is a huge success story um, out there at Mokai. Um, we were all fortunate to have a tour out there at the beginning of the year. Um, and as you say, to the credit of the past trustees as well as uh, the current trustees, their vision and their ideas to um, be self-sustainable out there and use all their byproducts is just unbelievable. So, yeah, um, we congratulate um, everyone that's involved out there and um, creating the business and, and the work and, and bringing families back to our district to uh, um, create um, Topol the way, the Topol district the way it, it should be a thriving um, wellbeing community. So is there any other questions for Richard? Great. Yeah, Richard, magnificent really for the district. Just, just out of interest, like things like the supplies, you know, 25% growth. Will you get the supply from the region and things like that? Is that, is that one of your battles ahead? And yeah, I mean, at, at, as Miraka is just whole milk powder, so it's a commodity business at the moment. So we're reasonably high turnover, but quite low margins. Um, <coughs> one of the important things in retaining that margin is that we have our collection area quite close to the factory. So the further afield we go, the more cost we incur. So our growth, we're looking to get our growth from within a 70k radius of the factory, if possible. Um, as we develop the business, so I mean, this is this is step one for us. So there's, there's certainly uh, thoughts of putting on additional drives in years to come. Um, so as we go further up the value chain, so increase more margin back to the business, the opportunity is is there to go further afield if necessary. Do you see yourself going towards the processed products in the end for the for the 
the vet meat market and stuff like that? Is that a yeah, we'll work with yeah, vinegar milk and other. Um, there's a huge opportunity in China with with retail products, but for us to take a branded product into China is quite difficult. So um, we're fortunate that with vinegar milk, they're a very good partner in the Vietnamese market, and we may even look at the Chinese market and finding the right person to work with to take a retail product into there. Yeah. I mean, there's no question the demand's there. It's just making sure you, you get your ducks in a row before you go there. Thanks, Bridget. If not, if someone... Oh, oh Nicola, sorry, Nicola. Yes, thank you very much for your presentation, Richard. It's You've probably e seen e half of it before. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think I did... Um, it, you gave a presentation yeah, at Western, but the brilliant, very right. exciting presentation yeah. at, at Western. But with regard to um, the, the future of... Um, of Miraka and and your future developments is the is the geothermal um, is that been a, a really good move for your plant as far as harnessing that energy and and have you had to adapt some of the plant and machinery especially because of of the geothermal um, energy um, source or yeah how does that work absolutely there is two parts to that so um, certainly we've had to had to adapt I mean we've put in a clean steam plant which um, it's probably a similar cost to a coal-fired boiler, but the benefit is we have that low carbon footprint. So it's not just plug it in, plug the geothermal pump into the side of the building and away you go. There's significant investment <coughs> in getting the steam cleaned up and to a point we can use in the processing. Um, so that is that is one aspect, but the, the ability to not have coal trucks rolling in the gate every day and burning coal is, is fantastic. And the downstream effect of that will be realised when we get into branded products that we can take offshore that people can actually then put on their put on their packaging, you know, looking for low carbon footprint ingredients. At the moment it's hard to derive value out of it because we're selling a commodity. You know, it's twenty five kg bags of homework powder to China. We're not going to drive value out of that, but if we go, you know, further upstream or, or downstream we'll be able to generate value. The suggested resolution that the information be received and Mr. Richard Ralph be thanked for his presentation. Can I have a mover and a second? Thank you, Councillor Williams and Councillor Minchler. Thank, Thank you, Richard. Pleasure. All those in favour? Aye. Aye.